Now let's talk about parallel and in series connected pumps operating together. It is well known that a single pump performance when operating with a specific pipe system is most often determined graphically. And for this purpose, the two curves, the pump head curve and the pipe system resistance curve are plotted on one scale and presented in a common coordinate system, like given in this diagram. The equality of the pump head and the required pressure to overcome the hydraulic resistances in a given pipe system is obtained by the intersect point between these two curves, which in this case is presented by the point A. This point is known as a pump operating point and is used to specify the values of the pump operating parameters such as pump flow rate presented by QA, pump head presented by HA, pump power, I'm talking about the input power, presented by PA, and the pump coefficient of efficiency presented by eta A. As can be seen from the graph, for the operating curves of a particular pump and the relevant pipe system, there is only one operating point corresponding to these operating conditions, which said in other words means that there will be just one flow rate, in this case it is the flow rate QA, that can be ensured by the system. Now, let's focus our attention on parallel connected pumps operating together. It is known that to cover the water demand in the hours of peak consumption, a commonly used practice is to use the inclusion in the mode of parallel operation of two or more pumps. A sample picture is shown in this slide. In general, each pump sucks water independently and feeds it into a common discharge pipe. The parallel operation of a given number of pump units can be performed in different variations, which are now to be studied. The first case is the one we start with. This is the case where two same type, identical parallel connected pumps are installed in a common pump station and located relatively close to each other. In this case, the pumps suck water through the same type separate pipes and supply it to a common discharge pipe, the beginning of which is presented by the point O. You can see this in the picture below. The pipes connecting the outlet of each pump with this point are of the same size and relatively short, and thus the energy loss in them could be neglected. This is because it will be insignificant. Therefore, both pumps operate at the same head, which means that H1, the head of pump 1, will be the same with H2, the head of pump 2, and it's going to have a given constant value. By taking into account the pump's uniformity, it can be concluded that at the same system head, the flow rate ensured by each of the two pumps will be the same, which means that the relationship between the system total and pump's individual flow rates may be presented like shown on this slide. Just have a look at this equation where the system total flow rate is presented as sum of the pump individual flow rates. And by taking into account the pump uniformity, the system total flow rate could also be presented as twice the individual flow rate of each pump. The graphical solution of the problem related to determining the system flow rate as well as the pump's individual flow rates may be explained by using the diagram presented, presented in this figure. Initially, a certain number of lines of constant head 
h prime, h second, and h terza are plotted, where at each of the set heads values, the flow rate that is ensured by the individual pumps must be summed, which is done as summing of geometric sections. In this case, since the two pumps are at the same type and ensuring the same flow at a given head, for H prime, the system total flow rate expressed by the section A prime C prime, just look at the picture, will be twice higher than the flow rate of either of the pumps expressed by the section A prime B prime, which means that it's written in red color. The section A prime C prime is two times the length of section A prime B prime. The case to be studied is the case when two different type parallel connected pumps are installed in a common pump station and located close to each other. So at the graph, it can be seen the two individual head curves of the two pumps. And after plotting the pipe system resistance curve described by the equation below, the intersect point, point A, representing the operating point of the two parallel connected pumps operating together will be obtained. Point C, it can be seen in the graph, determining the flow rate QC would be the system operating mode in case that only one of the pumps is run into exploitation. While point B, here is it, while point B, specifying the flow rate QB that each pump ensures when both they are operating together. The graphic solution is similar to the one of parallel operation of two same type identical pumps that was previously discussed. Over again, point A, respectively the flow rate QA, specifies the system operating mode when the two pumps operate together, while the point B and C may be used in determining the individual flow rates of the two pumps, where QB is the flow rate ensured by pump 1 and QC is the relevant flow rate concerning pump 2, which means that the total flow rate QA can be presented as the sum between QB and QC. The intersect points of the individual head curves of the two pumps with the pipe system resisting resistance curve provide information about their operating modes in case that each pump operates separately. In this case, the starting point of the system head curve is the point D, determined by the zero flow rate of the lower head pump curve at head that is higher than H01, only pump 2 will ensure flow rate. This is important to remember. The case to be studied is the one where two different type parallel connected pumps are installed in different pump stations, but still they are located at the same level. The picture below fully illustrates the idea of this type of connecting pumps. The specific feature in this case is that it must be taken into account that the second pump is located at a great distance from the connecting point, point O, which requires to indicate the energy loss given with HV2 in the pipe. The reading of the energy that is consumed in overcoming the existing hydraulic resistances means that the available head in point O concerning pump 2 will be less than that of its outlet. To obtain the summary system head curve of the two pumps, it is necessary to refer the head curve pump 2 to the common joint point O. For this purpose, 
in one scale and a common coordinate system, the head curve of pump 2 and the resistance curve of the pipe connecting this pump to point O are plotted. Then it has to be plotted a certain number of constant flow rate lines starting from Q1 and up to Qn, subtracting from each of the pump head. For example, you can have a look at HP2 and the section FC, which corresponds to the energy loss in the pipe obtained at this certain value of the flow rate. This is how the dotted line representing the recalculated head curve of pump 2 is obtained. It is now possible to plot the summarized head curve of the two pumps operating in parallel by summing, as already described, the head curve of pump 1 and the recalculated head curve of pump 2. Then, the operating mode in the joint operation of the two pumps is determined by the point A, just have a look at the picture, respectively the insured system total flow rate will be QA. The individual flow rates of the two pumps in this case are determined by the points B, flow rate QB concerning pump 1 and point C, flow rate QC that concerns pump 2 respectively. As it can be seen that QA can be presented as the sum of QB and QC. The starting point of the summary head curve is marked by the point D and the reason for its choice is analogous to the previously discussed case. The next case to be studied is when two different parallel connected pumps are installed in different pump stations and located at different level. The hem of the analyzed case is presented in this slide. The two heights at which the pumps are positioned are marked with H1 and H2 respectively, and the energy loss obtained in the two pipes supplying the flow rates to the joint point, point O, will be HV1 and HV2 respectively, like given in the picture. In order to obtain the summary head curve of the two parallel operating pumps, it is necessary to refer in the manner already described, their individual head curves to the joint point, point O. The equations describing the two pipes curves may be presented as shown in this slide. In this slide, it is presented graphically the determination of the operating point in the studied case. The recalculated head curves of the two pumps are plotted with the dotted lines. After summing these curves graphically, their summary head curve starting at point D is obtained. The intersect point of this curve with the pipe system resistance curve is determined by the point E, you can see in the graph, which means that the system total flow rate will be QA and the individual flow rates of the two pumps QB for pump 1 and QC for pump 2 respectively. Second analyzed option is in case of pumps connected in series that operate together. A sample scheme illustrating this process is given in the slide. So, pumps, two or more, are connected in series when a pump is not able to operate on its own to ensure the required head in the system. When connected pumps in series, the system total flow rate is equal to the individual flow rate ensured by each pump, which means that the system total flow rate will be the same like Q1, which is the individual flow rate of pump 1, and Q2, which is the individual flow rate of the second pump. As each pump adds extra energy 
or head to the fluid flow passing through it. Determining the operating mode of the pumps requires the reuse of their individual head curves that are used in plotting the summary one. The, the method of connection requires, in this case, to plot vertical lines of constant flow rate, where at each one the pump heads are to be summed. This is presented in the figure in the next slide. Connecting pumps in series may be performed in different schemes, but we are going to analyze the most typical one. In the graph in this slide, a case of two series connected different pumps located close to each other in a common pump station is considered. The sections A prime B prime and A prime C prime see the picture are used to present the relevant heads H1 prime and H2 prime of pumps 1 and 2 respectively concerning the first selected constant value of the flow rate which means that Q prime is a constant. As it turned out the system total head at this flow rate will be the sum of the heads of the two pumps connected in series which means that H prime will be the sum of H1 prime and H2 prime, which is also presented by the sections A prime B prime plus A prime C prime. It's presented in the graph. The other points outlining the contour of the summary head curve used for its plotting are obtained during the two serial connected pumps operating together. The intersect point, point A, of the summary head curve and the pipe system resistance curve determines the system parameters. The flow rate will be QA and the head will be HA. Since the flow rate of each of the pumps is the same and equal, to that in the system, it becomes clear that the points point B and point C are used to determine the head of pumps, pumps 1 and 2 at the insured flow rate in the system. For the better understanding of these specific theoretical explanations, the development of some upcoming separate videos is envisaged. Each video is going to include a demonstration of the analytical determination of the operating modes of the pumps in the considered cases of their joint work. Thank you for watching this video.